the return of this country. It made our top 50 shows of the decade. In fact, two of the shows we're discussing today were on that list. This is da uh, Daisy May and Charlie Cooper, the sibling duo who write and star in this series, a mockumentary set in the Cotswolds about um, young people with very little structure in their lives, very little focus, and it just follows them around on their day-to-day -day activities like a mockumentary would. Of course, between the, the Aftermath episode, which was a special last year, and this new one, they lost a, um, a friend and a cast member in Michael Sleggs, and this was their tribute to both him as a friend and an actor, and as a character, it was called A Letter from Michael Sleggs, and it involved uh, Curtin finding a letter from Michael, explaining that something he had got in trouble for, um, Kerry and Michael were actually the masterminds of. This all went on whilst Kerry was living, doing her day day job at the local tip. Um, why, what you never remember about this show is just how widely observed it is how how they just have such a way with the way they look at the world their comedy timing is incredible it just it just works i don't think we need to say anything other or i need to say anything other than it just works it's just cause so many of these shows like the american office and parks and rec you'd wonder why would these camera crews keep going back and on this you just, it just works you don't question anything they, it feels yeah because this is so going to be the last one isn't it as yeah. well so um yeah, yeah no I, I get and i think what they did well in in terms of as you say this sort of tribute to um slugs is the character isn't it yeah yeah michael slugs is, is the actor is it wasn't sort of overly maudlin and things like that you know they weren't no. sort of mourning him or anything you know they had their opening bit where it's like he was ill for a while and and he wanted to go to was it a zombie escape room or something mm. like that yeah. uh, and then we didn't go because he died um, and, but and, it, it was affectionate without being saccharine and sweet yeah. and then and the letter being delivered by the girlfriend and saying he did he wanted to have a clear conscience and it was it was something really sort of petty wasn't it about going on a holiday and and breaking moving in the bed. bed yeah yeah i loved all the stuff with carrie at the at the recycling plant and stealing loads of stuff and it's great to just have these characters back for one final time i like now that more shows are announcing that this is going to be the final mm. series and i think it's good before these characters get too stale before they run out of things to do because i know there was a couple of episodes in the second series i think that you were a little bit down on didn't sort of a maybe little get, bit just because didn't hit I the like quality it, of yeah i like it when series. the pair are together like they were a lot in this episode and i think due to daisy's pregnancy while they were filming series two she was often separated from what was going on and the focus was was on curtain which is fine but i just like the dynamic between yeah. them and, and this episode had a lot of a lot the of them. stuff and with I... him cooking for her and, and yeah. turning her mum over in bed and i like the way they reference the fact they're being followed by these camera crew ever so often um it's just it's, just, it's a really like good you mentioned show. the american office and and they sort of didn't bring yeah. that up did they till the final season of that but and, uh, there was that line about her what was it being loyal to only two things and one was the tv channel dave i love everything about it because mm. you just never know where it's going to go what it's going to reference yeah. I, I there's think not like... much we can be critical about here no. it's just going to be a just sort of a love say, fest, it's, really it's still as good as it ever was and if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet do before this series disappears um series three drops every monday yeah. at about 7 i was just gonna say that's day. interesting isn't it because the last two been all, all at the same time am i right yes. on that yeah, yeah that you are right but this one they've decided to do weekly i think it's just just savor the fact that it's the final series and perhaps that final episode is really poignant or something and they don't want people going oh did you see the final episode of this country where dot 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 happens you know so they've decided to not make it all available and i'm fine with that personally so this country mondays at 10 35 on bbc one or a few hours earlier than that if you want to watch it on the iplayer that's the final series of the bbc3 hit comedy the finale of the wonderful this country you may remember if you're a long time listening to the pod that we spoke to daisy and charlie when they were basically just getting started this country wasn't the big hit and social media darling that it has since become and award-winning and all the rest of it so we've been there 
right from the off when Matt thought it was a proper documentary when I asked him to watch it. Well, it was it was the shot that they used on the BBC previews website because it was the front page, but it was it was the shot and. You know, I suppose that's the point, isn't it? That it is that sort of mockumentary style that a lot of documentaries that BBC Three did look like. Ha- yeah. Oh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, but that was the end of my sentence. No, the the, <laughs> the Skype went weird. So okay. we we reached, unfortunately, the finale. Uh, this uh, centered around the vicar. I think Charlie and Daisy said. Uh, the BBC screening that I sent a colleague to that the, this series was all about the vicar and his his arc really. So we learned at the end of the brilliant. Yeah, can, we, fifth, can we talk uh, about we the fifth? Talk about that one as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. I just say that we learned at the end of the fifth that the vicar had gone uh, to Bristol to under the guise of seeing his son when really he was there to speak to the archbishop about moving to pastures new. That's all I'll say, and we can talk about the fifth episode. No. It, it was sort of like a waiting for Godot type thing, wasn't it? It was literally just jo- Charlie and Daisy at the train station and those sort of just banal conversations that I uh, think... I've, it's a really callback to Oven Space, which is just, hmm. was just waiting for pizzas to cook. Uh, and... and there was the one in the second series where they were sort of walking around as well. I can't remember where they're going to... They were got lost going somewhere. Like a tree festival or something, mm. something like that, yeah. Uh, but this one, I think there, there were several bits that I really liked. There was a sort of diatribe about Toadie from Neighbours um, yeah. at a pantomime. That my, I think my favourite scene that made me laugh out loud several times was him trying to tell a door code to an old woman across the phone. If I can add that in... I will try and add that into the uh, Two recording. Zero four six. Two is yeah, I the still number. remember the number now. G, I... G is in four. G, yeah. G is a G four. No, there's no G. And then the bit was, was it Darren Lacey across the... Yeah. Dazza, yeah. Lacey. Uh, and then him throwing her shoe onto the train. Why would you <laughs> do that? And then the vicar attacking him when he comes up behind him to surprise him. And it's... the bit where he pretends to be the milkman on the phone to yeah. her mum. That was, was just genius. It was just genius. <laughs> the was whole just thing like, was just... Yeah. It was like hanging out with those two. Mm. You were almost sat on the bench next to them. It, and it, it proves how good they are. Not just the storytelling, but it's just general dialogue. They can just... They know those characters so well inside and out. They can just put them in a, in a static situation and it still be so, so funny. So Kerry's been in charge of looking after the chickens while the vicar's been away. <laughs> and... <laughs> and curtains have basically the vicar's hotline for any troubles in the village and it, it's, so she's there to tell him how well she's done looking after the chickens and he's there to say you've you've put one over on me you gave me this awful job and I never want to do it again and he's got a couple of bones to pick with the vicar but it just it, it exemplifies the relationship the two of them have to him as like a father figure mm-hmm. And that's what makes the revelation at the end that he's moving on hit so hard. And I I was saving this episode because I knew I would dread it. Not that the series was over. That was bad enough. But the fact that I knew it was going to have some poignancy with the vicar leaving. And I've been a bit of an emotional up and down at this these past seven days. And, and it was just... Why brilliant. is that, Luke? I've no idea, Matt. I've been stuck in a lot. It's quite normal, isn't it, this week? Nothing's yeah. much has happened. No, it's true. I've been stuck in more than I'd like. Um, but I don't know. It was just... it was. It's up there with my favourite final episodes of anything. And it's it's a work of, of humanity and a, a work of genius. I just think it was great. And um, all the stuff with the King of the Harvest was brilliant. Kerry in charge of oh, yeah. the harvest and going around and collecting everybody's shopping. The vicar losing it in the only way the vicar can. Joan is a great character. I wish we'd seen more of her. In I, in... I loved the scene between the vicar and Mandy. I don't know if you can play yeah. that as well. Yeah. I hear you leaving. Never, yeah. never, never really, really worked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just the, the moment in the office just absolutely broke me when... Curtin, who's been resistant to the idea of the vicar leaving, mm. 
finally comes round and says, you know, you've got to go. And I, it's just a... I like the way the episode turns. So initially it was him reluctant to tell them because he knew sort of the influence he was on them. And then them him being reluctant to go because of the sort of the differences between the sort of the small colloquial parish he's in currently and the sort of challenges that a big city like Bristol would would bring the there was that brilliant thing about the needle exchange which which I thought was quite an amusing <laughs> yeah. uh, moment and then Carrie and Curtin having to be the people who were convincing him to go despite the risks that were despite mm. his reservations and I just thought the, the writing the way it turned in terms of the dynamics of that relationship, I think we're, we're brilliant. And and Daisy and Charlie and Paul, I I will butcher his surname. I want to say Shiadi, 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 I think. Shiadi, the the actor, um, all brilliant. And I think the ensemble as well in this, you know, the members, the ensemble members of the Cooper family primarily, uh, but also the the other actors that they bring in, I think, are all populate this world brilliantly and i just i i and the the final line which you quoted early on not knowing that it was in the final no, episode with uh rob robinson yeah i never really watched this not my sort of thing you not remember rob robinson we did a whole episode about me trying to no. find out what happened i also love the bit with the it's just the, the the silly bits in this country that make me laugh so when she when she's working doing the harvest and she gets all excited because they got Heinz tin of beans and she starts singing oh when the Heinz come marching in oh yeah <laughs> oh when the Heinz come marching in oh brilliant this country if you've never seen it we've sport the end of it but please go and watch it it is one if not it's up there with mum as the best comedy yeah. in, in, in recent years we, we love them both and uh I can't say I love this country more than mum because I wouldn't want to deface mum in any way, but I just think it's a work of pure genius. And it, I'm already annoyed. I was slightly annoyed at the idea of an American remake, although they have worked in some cases, the American office being possibly the best example of it. But then my hopes were dashed because do you know who they've cast as the vicar? No, you have to tell me. You don't, so let me just set the scene for you first. So is this an American actor? This is an American actor. So Paul Feig someone is... Someone you hate? Someone I hate. Somebody that shouldn't be playing the vicar. And I'm not going to make you guess. Sean William Scott. Mm, okay. Who doesn't have no, the same... He needs to be an older actor. I mean, yeah, needs to be him. He's probably like 45, but... Yeah, but he still doesn't have the gravitas that that character needs and the warmth i mean no, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen but imagining that he doesn't have that uh, but that'll be coming to fox when tv is a thing in the future okay um this Who, country, who's playing uh, carrying Curtin? no no word yet i think paul feig uh, is involved and he said that um he wants it to be unknowns like Dave, yeah. daisy and charlie were in the oak I like the idea that... You know who they should get to play the, the vicar? Who? The dad from Freaks and Geeks. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> how old would he be now? He'd be quite doesn't, old now. It doesn't matter. Actually, no, it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. He could, well, I suppose he could play, like... Len. Len, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we might, I don't know whether we'll have an equivalent to Len, but yeah. And so it would be interesting to see uh, what that is like. Well, they could gender it, swap yeah. it and have Anne Dowd. Oh yeah, I'd be a little bit terrified of her though. If she was a bit, because <laughs> um, I think she put that prodding machine she's got in the handmade stale with her.